Today's topic is really something special. How to find a manufacturer for your cosmetics brand. We'll investigate how to find manufacturers, how to select the right manufacturers, and how to evaluate the manufacturers in the future. Let's do it! Congratulations, you've done it. You've promoted yourself, you've gained followers, developed product ideas, made some sales, and now comes the hard part, manufacturing and scaling. Finding cosmetics manufacturers is easy enough. In the US, one of the best ways is through web portals like ThomasNet at ThomasNet.com and MakersRow at MakersRow.com. These sites allow you to not only search for manufacturers in your local area, but you can sometimes filter those results by company size, revenue, and specialty. Another reliable resource is from industry publications. Happy Magazine is a beauty supply publication that constantly features cosmetic manufacturers. I highly suggest reading it. Industry groups are another tool. One such group is the Personal Care Council, or PCC for short. They keep a very extensive list of hundreds of beauty manufacturers in the US and abroad. And if you're looking for international manufacturers, especially in Asia, I'd look no further than Alibaba.com. There you can get samples, quotes, and prototypes in mere weeks. It's really amazing. Now, you've found your list of manufacturers. How do you now select the one that's right for you? Well, there are literally hundreds of factors to consider when making your final decision. But to simplify the list, I want to introduce you to a friend of mine, Anna. She's a budding beauty entrepreneur who's grown frustrated having to pick the right manufacturer for her body wash. But how should she do it? Well, Anna should consider the following. First, minimum order quantity. This is the lowest number of units that the manufacturer will make. This number is especially important for startups, as you don't want to produce 10,000 units of, say, lipstick when you don't have enough orders and you have nowhere to store the inventory. You want an MOQ that your business can handle. Next, lead times. This is the time it takes for the manufacturer to finish making your product once they have received the purchase order. Generally, you want short lead times of two to six weeks, but lead times can vary depending on how much capacity the manufacturer has. Formula ownership. Let's say Anna came to the manufacturer with her own cosmetics formula. That formula is obviously hers. But let's say now that the manufacturer's chemist made a formulation for her. Does she own it then? Well, it depends. Some manufacturers will charge you a fee to own a formula they developed. Others won't. Additional fees. Sometimes manufacturers will slip in additional fees throughout the manufacturing process. For example, formulation fees, testing fees, stability fees, etc. Some of them are legit, others are questionable, and sometimes you can reasonably request that they not be included. Next, certifications. Some manufacturers are certified by large interest groups or government bodies to make and distribute certain product categories. These certifications can in turn make your product more appealing to the broader market. Some examples are fair trade, organic, and ISO certifications. Next, cost of goods sold. This is of course the final cost of the manufactured goods to you, the consumer. This is the price you will pay the manufacturer and any price your customer pays above the cost of goods sold will be part of your profit. Needless to say, a very important number. And lastly, international shipping and regulation experience. If you have customers or plan to have customers outside of your country, it really helps to have a manufacturer 
who can navigate the paperwork and regulatory work necessary to export to certain countries and regions. For example, the EU prohibits over 1,000 cosmetic ingredients due to health concerns. A manufacturer should know to avoid such ingredients. Anna's manufacturer did, and now she's happier than ever. All right, next steps. Now, as you and your manufacturer are busy climbing the ladder to greater revenue and greater amounts of success, let's evaluate some ways to avoid pitfalls and mishaps. First, and I've seen this with a thousand clients who are just starting out, try not to release too many products too soon. I know many of you have ideas for like 20 products in your head, but think about what brands typically do. They usually have one or two main products that are unique, perform well, and distinguish their brand. And then they have some upsell products to diversify revenue. Besides, making the manufacturer produce a bunch of products at once increases the chances of error greatly. So I would start off with just three to four products and add more once you are on firm footing. Secondly, if you are just starting out, I would refrain from placing excessively large orders right away even if you will get st steep price discounts. Why? Well, every product has a learning curve, and just because someone says they can deliver 1 million units of, say, a body wash, you still want each unit to be perfect. And if they mess up, you would rather it be on a small 10,000 unit order. Thirdly, be aware of cost-cutting measures and proposed product changes. So all manufacturers like to initiate cost-cutting measures. This might mean getting a cheaper fragrance for your lotion or cheaper preservative for your shampoo. And this is reasonable. Raw material costs go up with inflation. Just make sure the manufacturer has thoroughly tested their proposed changes and that these changes fall in line with your brand ideals. Fourthly, if the manufacturer is messing up completely and things are just out of control to the point where it's hurting your brand identity and revenue, it's time to find a new manufacturer. And lastly, the best, the utmost, the absolute most important thing to remember when dealing with your manufacturer is for there to be clear communication. The better communication on both sides, the fewer problems there will be and this applies pretty much to all relationships. All right, it's time for me to get out of here. This is Million Dollar Batchmaker. Hope you learned something today, and I hope to see you again soon. Subscribe if you like our content, and leave a comment. I would love to hear from you. Until next time, this is Million Dollar Batchmaker, signing out.